Amen. So, I'm really excited about this. Uh, I, I wanted to start the year off with this kind of series on how to be a winner. You know, how, how, does, how to... What is the beginner's guide to winning at life? You know, I always try and think when we start a new year in January, you know, what, what would help people start the year out? And as I was thinking about that, I thought, man, wouldn't it be great to just be winning? You know, if, if we could say, let's start the year off with a win. And for many of us, it only takes like maybe the first 30 minutes into January, you know, where it's not where, you know, you're struggling for that win. I thought it was hilarious that in Pinelands, the power went out at midnight. I just saw <laughs> SCOM is just making sure that like, hey, 2023 is not going to start off with, with a win. You know, and, and, and our family, you know, we, we've needed a win this week. Last week, I talked about this a little bit. Three or four nights in a row, our eight-month-old or nine-month-old pooped in the bathtub every time we put him in the bathtub. We needed a win from that. And finally, I think he's, he stopped doing that. We went to sink baths for a while, and then yesterday, I know he was in the big bathtub, and, and we were incident-free. But, but at the lad house, we needed a win there. And I know that, that many of us, if we think about just silly things, you know, like, like the internet was down here and uh, none of the ventilation system turns on and our gate motor wouldn't open yesterday because of load shedding and, you know, all these things are happening. We had a noise machine just kind of explode because of power surges. And so then it's like, well, how does the baby stay asleep at night? And, and even like the little things in life, it's like, man, I, I, I need a win in these areas. You know, Casey and I looked at each other yesterday when one of the baby monitors went out. I know these are silly examples, but you guys have probably all been there. And one of the baby monitors wasn't working, and we're like, man, are we just going to burn through appliances? Like, is load shedding just going to start knocking out, you know, baby monitors and fans and, and everything else? And fortunately, we got it to work. But, see, I, I want you guys to be able to look at your life and claim a win. Whether things are blowing up, whether you've got a child that's, you know, pooping in the tub, or whether whatever is happening in your life, you know, cars are another area where you just can't seem to win. You know, I want you to be able to claim that you have a win in your life. See, I want these wins to be independent of your situation and of your circumstance. I, I want you to say, I want you to be able to say, like, hey, I'm a winner. See, it breaks my heart that when we carry this burden and we say to ourselves, like, I can't get a win and I'm not winning and I just can't seem to get ahead. And that weighs heavy on us. And when it, when it weighs heavy on us for long enough, then it wears us down. And when it wears us down for long enough, then we start believing lies about ourselves. And when we believe lies about ourselves, it breaks us down even more and even more. We find ourselves down here on the bottom, you know, low level. Just say, I'm not worth anything, or nothing's working in my life. Why is my life such a wreck? And it, I, I want us to be reminded that no matter what your circumstances, there is a win that's available to you. There's a win that, that is not dependent on how well things are going or not going in your life. So that, that, that's kind of the, the intro to this. This is why I want this for you today. And so... When we think about winning, we oftentimes, this is where I'm getting kind of out of the spiritual and into a lot of the practical. When we think about winning, we think about success. So like winning equals success. And success for a lot of people equals winning. So you think, okay, if I'm winning at my job, if I'm doing right or doing well, I'm going to get a raise or promotion. I'm going to get, uh, uh, there's going to be success that comes with that, more money that comes with that. If I'm doing well in my marriage, I'm going to have, you know, there's going to be a success in our relationship. If I'm doing well, if I'm winning, success oftentimes we think is attached to that. Or, or you can look at it the other way around. You know, we look at people that are successful and we think, well, they're winning. People that are doing things right or, or they seem to be making money, their businesses are growing, their lives look great, they're driving great vehicles, they're not broken down the side of the road, they're not like me standing in the Virgin Active parking lot with my hood up jiggling a relay switch so that my car will start, you know, they're, they're, they have success. And you think, okay, let me, if they have success and they're winning, then let me do this thing, that, and then we all do this, where, you, where we emulate that success. So I, I love this because th this is such a powerful truth for us. See, we do this in a lot of ways. This is where pyramid schemes are born. 
This is where um, you know, I'm going to make a ton of people, well, maybe not a ton, a few people mad about this. I would dare to say that cryptocurrency would kind of be a part of this right here. You know, when you buy into crypto, you need other people to buy into it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It is real. It does have value. But we look at, we look at where other people are claiming success, and we try and emulate it. So uh, an easy example. I know that I don't look like much of a runner now, but back in the day, I used to run a ton. I used to run probably a, between 100 and 120, 130 kilometers a week. And I used to do big races, 100-mile races, uh, which is like 160K. I used to do all that. And in, in the States, before I moved to South Africa, I had a running coach, and he was teaching me how to run fast. And, and I started winning some races, these, these 50K and 50-mile races. And, and people were coming up to me and being like, what shoes do you wear? Okay, let me get the shoes that you wear. You know, what, what is it that you're drinking and eating? You know, what is it that you're doing that we can do and try and, try and you know, emulate your success? And then you had people that would show up to the starting line, and I love these people. It's like a 5K and they're wearing, you know, the compression sleeves on their things. And they've got the waist belt with the water bottles. And they've got the backpack on with the bladder. And they've got electrolyte tablets. And they've got the sunglasses and all this stuff on for like a, you know, for a 30-minute run. They're just throwing everything at it that they can to try and emulate this success. And what I would tell people is I would say, hey, there's no secret to this. Just go run more. Like, you know? And that's not what people wanted to hear. And they're like, okay, yeah, but what, it, okay, I get that. Run more, but, you know, what, it, what are you doing? Are you doing sprint? Are you doing this? I'm like, no, man, just go work harder. Like, just go run more. And, and now, you know, I don't run a lot, but I'm lifting weights with David. And, and, I, and, and people ask me, you know, hey, you know, you're getting kind of big, you know, you know kind of look, getting to where maybe you need to lose some body fat here. But, <laughs> you know. But, but you're putting on a little bit of muscle, and they're like, what are you taking? What are you on? How much protein do you, you, know, do you use and all this stuff? And I'm like, okay, there's no secret to this. You just lift heavy weights. Just keep lifting heavy weights, you know? There's nothing to really emulate here. You see, we look at things like fat loss. We look at things like finances and money. We look at successful people in those areas, and because we don't feel like we win in those areas, we try and emulate what other people are doing. We think that there's a trick. We think that there's a pill for those people that take, you know, the diet pill, you know? How comes this is, you're emulating something that's not going to bring you success. And you know, the body is simple. Calories in, calories out. I'm proving that right now. Surplus of calories in. <laughs> so... That's the way that that works. So there's, there's, a, there's a truth to success. Success is actually really boring. And so I've got four things here. that, that th These are things that successful people do. Successful people, they start the night before. So they plan out their next day. I don't know if anyone does that. It just requires, you know, you sitting down saying, what is it that I'm going to do the next day? You know, a lot of us, our head pops off the pillow and we're like, What's do? What do I do? Where do I need to be? Where do I need to go? And you're figuring things out on the fly. I, I can't operate that way, but people start the night before. Another, have a morning routine. You know, there's something that they do in the morning, every morning, that kind of builds a routine for them. Keeping a tight schedule. You know, they're, 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 they're going where they need to go. They know what they need to do, and they're staying on schedule with it. And then focus on productivity, so they're not sitting around watching Netflix all day, they're actually working, they're actually doing something. So th 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 this is like not sexy, it's not beautiful, this, but this is more the answer to what successful people do. And these things have something in common. See, th there's a lot of routine that's in here, there's a lot of um, just planning that's involved in here, but there's something that's really important in here, and that's consistency. See, your consistency is key to this. It's key to weight loss. It's key to weight gain. It's key to running a lot. It's key to growing in your business. It's key to learning another language. Consistency is key. You just have to do it every day, and you just don't stop doing it. If you miss a day, you pick it up. You don't miss twice. You just do it over and over and over and over and over again. It's consistency. Yeah, there's a guy, Craig Rochelle, 
He's a pastor in Oklahoma of a huge church called Life Church. It's a great church, and he's got a bunch of books. He's got a podcast. It's, it's a great leadership podcast. And he's got a quote that I, I just think is beautiful. And he says this. Okay, this is great here. Successful people do consistently what others do occasionally. So let me read that to you again. Successful people do consistently what others do occasionally. So what, where, where do you want to be successful? Whether it's something simple like weight loss, or whether it's something more complex like overcoming your anxiety or depression, or overcoming a fear, or mending a relationship with family. Are you working on that occasionally, or are you working on that consistently? Are you work because the only way to be successful is to work on it consistently. See, consistency, consistency is, is key. So, when we look at the difference between these two words, consistency and occasionally, the difference between occasionally and consistency are our actions. Okay? Now, this is, this is simple here. So, we're, we're going on a journey. All right? I want to make sure everyone is staying with me on this journey here. We want to be successful. We found out that success is kind of takes boring things that we have to just do. We have to be consistent at what we do. How do we be consistent? It means you have to do something consistently. And so doing something is an action. Not doing something is not an action. Doing something is an action. So the difference between doing something occasionally and doing something consistently is whether or not you act on it or whether or not you don't act on it. It's your actions. So that's where actions come into place. It's, it's consistency in action. Okay, so I want to make sure that we're all on target here. Now, James Clear, who wrote a book um, called Atomic Habits, it's a great book. If you have a chance to read it, read it. It's also a good audio book. You can just, you know, buy it and listen to it. It's great. Here's a quote here. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person that you want to become. See, that's a strong statement for us. Think about the kind of person that you want to become. Think about who you want to be. I want to be a strong husband or strong father. I want to be athletic or in shape. I want to be a role model to my kids. I want to be somebody that's free from addiction. I want to be somebody that, that can help mend relationships and families. I want to be somebody that has control over my thoughts and my feelings. This is the person that I want to be. What kind of person do you want to be? See, the person that you want to be, you have to think, are my actions leading up to that? So, it's, Karina, go back one side before we get to this one here. It's, it's every action that you take, it's a vote for the type of person that you want to be. The things that, that you want to do, the things that you do, are, are, it's like casting a ballot. It's casting a vote. See, what, what that means to me is that inside every one of us, there's kind of two people. There's the person you want to be, and then there's the person that you are. All of us have this. All of us are this. Every person in this room is, is the person that you are contrasted with the person that you want to be. And it doesn't mean that there's something majorly wrong with you. It's, it's just self-development. It's personal development. But for some of us, that gap is huge. And for some of us, we lay in bed at night and we just feel so desperate and so beaten down because the person that we want to be and the person that we are is so far apart. And we just can't see how we can bring it together. Well, th this right here, every action that you take, you're voting for the person you are or the person that you want to be. And see, if you're consistent with your actions and you consistently vote for the person that you want to be, then those two things move closer and closer and closer and closer together. And then one day you cast enough votes that you are, or at least you're moving towards in a happy way, a place that you feel good, you're moving towards the person that you want to be. Every action you take is a vote. It's a vote because in every single one of us, there's a war and there's a battle going on. Now, I, I, I personally identify with this greatly. Because, you know, I struggle with, with, with a lot of things. Struggle with anxiety, depression. Struggle with, with how I, I deal with that. And, and, and in me, there's always been, you know, these two people. And I, I talk to my wife about it so much. I'm like, man, I just, I just want to be this. 
But I just keep finding myself stuck here. I know what it feels like to just not feel like you can get those two things together. It's like I, I know that, that, that what it feels like when you feel like you can't mend a relationship or you can't control your thoughts or, or you, you, you can't be who you want to be. It feels like someone's holding you down or it feels hopeless or it feels like the world just keeps knocking you back. Like the world just won't let you step into being the person that you want to be. See, I want us to all make sure before we move on that we identify that, that we all struggle with it and it's okay to struggle with it. And I kind of want you to think about it. I kind of want to, want to bring to your mind right now, this, who, who in you are you? Are you the person you want to be? Or are you the person that, that you don't want to be? What, what actions are you taking and where are you casting your votes? See, I, I hope that, that in me talking about this, that's come to your mind and you've actually thought to yourself, you know what, I really don't like this about myself. I really would rather see myself being this kind of person instead of this kind of person. And I hope that you can maybe start to identify like, well, yeah, but here's the reason why I'll never be that. Here's the reason why I'll never kick that habit. Here's the reason why I'll never be able to find a relationship. Here's the reason why I'll never be able to mend this. Or, or here's the reason why the world just keeps pushing me down and won't let me get ahead, you know, professionally or financially. I, I, I want that to sit on the front of your mind because we're going to go somewhere with that. See, there's, there's an aspect of accountability to this. No one here, this isn't, no one here is being made forcibly. Well, I, I don't want to say no one because there are people that are in some horrible, abusive situations. So I don't want to, I don't want to discount that. I don't, I don't want to pretend that that doesn't happen. But, but most of us, I'll say on average, most of us, there's accountability to this. You have a personal accountability to yourself. If you want to lose weight and you want to be an in-shape person and you find that you're overweight because you love ice cream, every time you eat ice cream, you're casting a vote for the person that you don't want to be. Are you a victim to that? No, you make that choice, that decision. That means there's an, an aspect of accountability there. You've got to be accountable to that because you chose to make that action. No matter how hard it is or how impossible it seems, there's accountability. You are accountable to the actions that you take. You're accountable to that. So based on that accountability, the question that I have for you to, to, to then now consider is, is this next one, Karina, you can put it on. Are the actions that you are taking right now leading you to be the successful person that you wish to be? So th think about it. Are you taking actions? Or, or are the actions that you're taking right now leading you to be the successful person that you wish to be? What, what, what are the actions that you're taking? Identify those. So I, I love like a long pause on stage because it gets awkward. <laughs> But I do that on purpose because I, I want you to feel a little bit awkward. Because I, I want it to set in. I want it to settle. That you take actions every day, all day long. And are those actions leading you to be the successful person that you'd like to be? Or are they leading you to not be that person? See, you are accountable to what you do. And see, th th this is why it's important that we're doing this series of A Beginner's Guide to Winning at Life. Because this right here is often what keeps us from feeling like we're winning at life. Because we're unable to be accountable to the actions that we take. See, you're accountable to your actions. Are your actions taking you to the successful person that you wish that you could be? See, I, I think that this is such an important question for you to ask, or for you to ask yourself. And, and in fact, there's a lot in this sermon that I hope you get from it, but I hope that this question is something that you lay in bed at night and you think about. I hope this is something that you take away. I hope that this is one of those things that, that you remember. Are the actions that you're taking right now leading you to be the successful person that you wish to be? See, what that means is that you're, you're accountable to your actions 
But your actions can lead you in a good place as much as they can lead you into a bad place. So there's hope. There is hope. So we're going to look at a guy. I'm going to break the tension a little bit here. And we're going to look at a guy named Paul. And Paul struggled with this a little bit. And, and Paul was a guy that he, he wrote the majority of the New Testament. And uh, he was kind of tasked with the, with the job of taking Christianity or, or the way or Jesus to the Gentiles, which would be the non-Jewish people. So these are the people that, that, that the, the Jewish people thought, man, they don't deserve God. They don't deserve Jesus. They're kind of the pagans. They're the sinners. And so God took Paul who was at one point in time uh, persecuting people that were following the way of Jesus and said, okay, you've been persecuting me, so guess what? Now you're going to take me to the people that nobody thinks deserve me, and that's going to be the mission in your life. That's going to be the person that you're going to be. And so Paul, he, he's accountable to these actions. He has to think to himself, are my actions leading me to be this person? And he writes a letter to the church in Corinth, and he's kind of fleshing this out to them. He's fleshing out to them, am I this person? And this is how I become this person. And this is how serious it is that my actions take me and lead me to be the successful person that I wish to be. And so let's look at what Paul says here. Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians 9.24, he, he's talking about a, a sporting event. He uses this analogy of, of sports here. He talks about running a race. And, and in where the church of Corinth was, it was in a place that, that held the kind of the Olympic Games. There were two major games. There was the Olympics, which we kind of know of today and where they, this is where it started. But then there was kind of the, the games that were second to that. And, and this is what he's talking about because those games were played in, in this area. So Paul knows that his analogy is, is going to not fall on deaf ears. He knows that people are going to understand this. So he's talking to a bunch of athletes and he says, you know, he's talking to a whole church, a whole community of people. He says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run their very best to win? Okay, that's, that's obvious. In a race, everyone wants to win. But only one receives the prize. All right, it's easy to follow. Everyone runs, one person wins. Now, I know in America they're trying to get rid of that. Everybody gets a participation medal and there are no winners. And I disagree with that completely. There's winners and there's losers. One winner and everyone else is a loser. And if you lose, go try harder. I think that's something that we're missing anyway. That's for the childhood. So Paul says, says, okay, only one receives the prize. But run your race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. So Paul's saying, be intentional. Right, that's what this is. Be intentional. Run your race intentionally. Run the race with the intention that you're going to win. Paul says there's an intentionality to this. It doesn't happen by accident, all right? So be intentional. He goes on in, in verse 25 and it says, Now every athlete who goes into training competes in the games and they are disciplined and they exercise self-control in all of these things. Discipline and self-control. Those are tough words there. Self-control for me is a, is a tough, you know, it's a tough, tough thing. It's real hard to drive by a petrol station and not get a bar one or something. I can almost feel the Holy Spirit or, or a, something else just grabbing my steering wheel and pulling me into, you know, and I'm fighting against it and sometimes I, I get home. But this discipline and self-control, Paul's saying, everyone that competes in these games, they're exercising discipline self-control. Some of us have not touched discipline or self-control in a long, long time, to be honest. Especially when it comes to who's this person that you wish that you could be? Well, part of the reason why you're so far away from that is because all your actions that you're taking, you're casting a vote that doesn't line up with this person, and because of that, you've not touched discipline or self-control in a long, long, long time. Anybody here addicted to Diet Coke? You try and go like six hours without a Diet Coke and your brain just explodes inside your head. It's like you, you, know, you're, it's like you need it. You got to have it. Well, you've not exercised self-control or discipline from that in a long time. And when you start, the first time that you start to exercise discipline or self-control in your life, it's the hardest. When you first try and kick sugar, those first couple of weeks are the hardest. When you first try and kick caffeine... So I don't know how any woman in this room would ever get pregnant knowing that you can't have a cup of coffee when you get pregnant. 
Watching my wife kick caffeine twice was like, how are you functioning? How can this even be worth it? Is it worth it, ladies? Is it, I mean, I guess it is because we're all here. But So Paul goes on in this and he says, they do this. They exercise discipline and self-control. They do this to win a crown that withers. So he's talking about, you know, they win an earthly prize. It's, it's a wreath. It's a green, it's a bunch of leaves, you know, put leaves on the head, but that's going to wither and that's going to die. But we do it to receive an imperishable crown that cannot wither. So Paul said, okay, our prize is not earthly. Our prize is something that's even better, something that's even more. So that means that the discipline and the self-control that you're going to start putting in place after this message, it's not just going to help you with your day-to-day thing here. It's actually going to help you with something greater in your life. So Paul goes on in the next verse, and he says in verse 26, he says, now he's talking about himself. He's making a proclamation. Some of you need to write down a statement of proclamation. You need to claim something over your life. So Paul claims, therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. I have purpose to why I run. He says, I do not flail around like one that's beating the air, just shadow boxing. Paul said, I have a goal. It's definite. It's planned. I'm not just flailing around. I'm not just boxing at the air. And he goes on in verse 27. He says, but like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow be disqualified as unfit for service. See, Paul was called by God to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Every action that he took was a vote to be that person. He was intentional about it. He, he had discipline with it. He was self-controlled with it. He, he, he had a plan. He had a purpose. He knew what he needed to discipline in his life. He needed to discipline his body. He needed to discipline his urges, his thoughts, his mind. See, Paul tells us that he had to be intentional to be the person that he wanted to be. So that, that brings up this word, discipline. That's right. Here's a great word. It's a word that we love. And I'm not talking about discipline in your children. I'm talking about you having discipline on your life. So this brings us to step two. Last week was step one. Uh, the beginner's guide to winning at life. It was build your house on a firm foundation. Step two is to begin a discipline. So we want to begin a discipline. How are you going to get to be the person you want to be? How are you going to bring these two people together? I'm going to teach you a discipline today that's going to help you do that. So I've got another quote from James Clear here. He says, this is so good. This is why I don't do New Year's resolutions. Okay, I, I, I don't. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Some of you have no idea what that means because you don't have a system in your life for anything. You have, you're, just, you're just cruising through life, and, that, and that's okay. But if you want to get somewhere in your life, what he's saying here is your systems. This is your routine. This is, this is your why you do things the way you do. This is your morning routine. This is your planning. This is the decisions you make. Every little uh, decision and action you take that's casting a vote towards the person that you want to be, that, that's your system here. So what he's saying here is, is I can set a goal and I can say that, that I want to be the greatest runner in the world, but if I don't have a system in place of training and discipline and diet and yada, 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 then I'm never going to be that person. So you can set a goal and say, I want to read 100 books and I want to be this and that, but if you never, you know put the system in place of cutting off the internet or, or managing your, your time at night so that you're not scrolling through TikTok or something, you're never ever going to read the books that you've set a goal to. See, you can insert anything in here. Whatever goal you have, it requires a system to get there. We often think about the goal and we never, we never think about or worry about the system. That's why our actions are so important. See, what we want we want here is we want the product of discipline without the pain of discipline. Yeah, that stings, right? That's a big one. We want the product without the pain. We want the results without putting in the work. See, see th- th- this is why this is hard. This is why this is hard for us. This is why it's hard to feel like we're winning. 
This is why it's hard for us to say, man, I wish I could be this person that claims these wins in my life, but I just can't. I'm so far over here. I wish that I could be more disciplined. It's not that, it's not you can't. It's just that you want the product of it, but you don't want to go through the pain. See, discipline requires that you deny yourself. Paul talks about it in that verse that we read, where he put, he, he actually says that, that he beats his body and he, he makes it his slave. See, Paul had the same urges that we have, the urge to quit, the urge to surrender. You know, he was dealing with it with Gentiles, and he was like, you know, these people don't want Jesus. Why, are they, why am I doing this? He'd been thrown in jail. He'd been beaten. He'd been shipwrecked. Paul was the worst person to travel with because you were guaranteed to encounter a natural disaster. But Paul, he, he could have given up at any point in time. But he knew that it was going to be painful, and he was okay with that. He knew that he was going to have to put in work in order to see the results. So when I said part two of, of being a winner at life was that you needed a discipline. I, actually, and it's that you need to begin with a spiritual discipline. See, we, we need a spiritual discipline in our life. And I'm going to tell you why this matters. So even, even if you have no relationship with Jesus, this, this matters, this applies to you. Even if you don't believe in Jesus, this applies to you. We were all created in the image of God. This works for everybody. And, and I kind of at the end of this message, I'm going to issue a dare you know, to all of you. But we need to begin a spiritual discipline. This is why it has to start spiritually. It, it can't start somewhere else. You can put disciplines all over your life. But it needs to start spiritually. We talked about it last week. And we look at, at Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And it says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, so Jesus is talking about him teaching uh, the Sermon on the Mount. He gives people all these things that they need to do to have a successful life. And he says, if you hear those things and you put them into practice, it's like a wise man that builds his house on the rock. All right, so, so when we make Jesus our first discipline, we're, we're building our house on a firm foundation. See, Jesus is the foundation of our life. So if we want to build a life of discipline, then we need to first make sure that the disciplined life that we're building is built on the right foundation. This is why I want to dare you to make Jesus your first discipline. And this is an absolute dare. And I feel confident that I can do that because I feel like that, that Jesus is not going to let me down. And Jesus won't let you down. See, the, the reason that this matters so much, that Jesus is your first discipline, especially for those of you that don't believe in Jesus yet, and if you don't, that's, that's okay, because you're the one that's going to gain the most out of this. You're the one that has the most wonder and amazement coming to you out of this, is that the overflow of Jesus is the only thing that can impact your eternity. It's the only thing that can impact your eternity, is the overflow of Jesus. See, nothing else, no other discipline can impact your eternity. But Jesus, and accepting his love and his free gift, that's the one thing that can impact what happens to you after you leave this world. So this is why this matters. And when you get this, when Jesus is your first discipline, when you accept the dare that I've given you, then no matter what happens in your life, you've got to win. You can claim a win. So I, I want to get through, I, I've, I've got kind of four ways that you can build this discipline and I'm trying to, to manage time because they're going to cut the power maybe around 10 o'clock. Karina, throw up the, the, the slide here of, of uh, those, four, those four things here. Thank you. So there's four steps to beginning a spiritual discipline. This is easy. All right, this is something for you that everyone can do. Whether you've never had a quiet time or done anything with Jesus in your life, 